Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Secret World. So, last time we left off finishing off an investigation mission from Henry Hawthorne. And we've got, what we've got left is a couple of side missions and the continuation of our story mission. Though, with the story mission, we do need to head towards the airport, which is going to be a little more difficult at the uh, set of gear and stuff that we have. On, our, on this particular character. So we do have some SP and AP to spend, so let's take a look and see what we can put things into. Well, we have six points, and major and minor talismans can both be upgraded for six points and still only have some left over, so let's do that. There we go. And then over to our ability wheel. As a reminder, we're going for the Bounty Hunter. So, we could put some more stuff, or we could start working on some of these higher level abilities, but let's finish out our pistols here first. So, let's see. Get 10 points, so we'll get Coup de Gras. We aren't actually going to equip any of these, uh, because we're, you know, our current build is, is fine. Uh, drone Kit. And straight shooter. I won't use up all our points, but you know we'll we'll hold on until we get get enough points there for uh, dirty tricks. So, <coughs> excuse me. Back to the game. So with our side missions, we are going to go to the morning light camp. But on the way, we are actually going to... Alright, I know there's a side mission up here in the graveyard. So we're going to grab that real quick, because that'll involve killing uh, several different zombies in the area. Veterans Day. Kingsmith, like so many other small towns across the country, lost soldiers in the Second World War. A quick glance at the nearby graves reveals that some veterans have risen as walking dead. Honor them by putting them back in their graves as soon as possible. Tier 1. Fallen war veterans have risen from their graves. This is not a proper epitaph for people who died defending freedom and human life. Send them back to the grave again so they can rest in dignity. We'll grab that. And that's considered normal. Or, sorry, Veterans Day is considered normal. One thing that I'm forgetting is let's get our where is it? Let's get our experience booster going. And looks like our first uh, veteran is over here. And there he is, banging on the back of a pickup apparently. Zed Flamer Johnson down. Next one's just up here. And let's see. I think he's just around the bend. There he is. Cannonball Bill. And fortunately right over here is the morning light camp we were told to run to. So what does that want us to do next? Look for more information. Hey, man. We actually have finished, as you can see, the uh, the missions here. Examine morning light information sheet. 
Yes, I will embrace the light. Morning light information sheet. Personal name, Walter Berry. Date of birth, 1911-75. Address, 16 Lovecraft Lane, 2D. Telephone, 555-1763. Email, none. Job title, gas attendant for Cycle Gas Station. Are you open to our one-week training course? Yeah. Are you open to participating in a commune? Maybe. Are you open to helping others find the light? Sure, okay. What got you interested in the morning light? I hate my job, man. I got kids and that's hard. They're like people I don't know a thing about. Everyone's strangers, man. I want to know people. I want to love and be happy. I saw your brochure and I'm interested, I guess. Confirmation. I hereby confirm the information provided is accurate and I agree to three personalized meetings with a morning light counselor to per further pursue my spiritual evolution. Signature, Walter Berry. And turning quest from the Illuminati here. Morning Light is a new age movement that preaches change and moral revolution. These guys are worse than zombies. Once they get your na their nails into you, you will never shake them. Make sure you don't sign anything. There's an apocalyptic slant to their rhetoric, so it's not surprising they've got a hippie camp in the middle of an occult war zone. If they're looking to ambush desperate souls, Kingsmith is the place. Fun fact, their spiritual leader is Philip Marquard. According to his bio, he's, quote, never not smiled. KG. And back we go. Putting uh, war veterans back where they belong. Well, the dead war veterans. Alright. Which one we got here? As soon as I get up the hill without stumbling over something. Hello, zombies. Is that them? Yep. Deadeye Dan Williams. that might be on the other side of the river. Yeah, okay, so we can go south to this guy here, then we'll cross the river and go over to there. And that'll actually leave us reasonably close to the skate park where we can uh, grab another couple of missions. There's Edwin the Doc Manon. down. Now across the river. There he is. Terry O'Reilly, the Irish tank. the standard uh, Illuminati turn-in text. However, they're giving us their choice of weapon, and these are QL2 weapons, which is something we can certainly use. Uh, let's see. Let's grab a Chaos Focus, because we only have a white QL1 Chaos Focus. So we'll grab the green QL2, and we'll equip it, and we will disassemble the old one. Apparently, it is not disassemblable. All right. Link. And we'll just discard it. 
off to the skate park. Looks like someone's been busy here setting traps. And a bit of lore over here that we can pick up. In this area is take the RC plane back to the skate park. Ah, put it here on the empty table spot. And transfer the pics from the webcam to the laptop. And let's see what he took pictures of. Well, okay then. Apparently got a thing for the morning light girl. And standard morning or er, Illuminati turn in text there again. And here we are with Danny Difference. We will pick up the half finished flamethrower, flim away. Danny has a non working flamethrower lining on a table, but there are no suitable parts around to fix it. The flamethrower could probably or possibly come in handy if fixed. There's only one place nearby you could find what is needed. Grab that half finished flamethrower. And go to Edgar's scrapyard. We don't do that yet because we're going to talk to Danny here. We are not going to grab the investigation mission because uh, we will do that in a separate video. But we are going to grab his stealth mission, ATC. A highly secretive group has set up camp at the local airport. Danny has tried spying on them with makeshift surveillance equipment, but his plans are constantly foiled. He suspects foul play and wants help to figure, to figure out what's really going on. Tier 1. Danny wants to use his remote-controlled plane to spy on the Orochi camp, but it keeps cr crashing. He thinks they have an EMP device which disrupts his attempts. Use the nearby remote-controlled plane to ca test his claims. Taking a break from saving the world, huh? I bet you've been out there punching darkness in the face and kicking evil in the... uh... nuts. <laughs> or maybe you've been checking up on the MIBs? Come on. Dead guys followed by very much alive guys in black suits and black vans? Connect the dots. Anyway, that's what I've been doing. Connecting the dots. I rigged one of my RC planes with a wireless webcam. No biggie. Super easy stuff. I already did it last year for, um, research. Not to get footage of Mr. Rosen, my math teacher, watering the flowers in his underpants so I could put it on YouTube. That wasn't me. Flying this thing is like, uh, like air traffic control in Silent Hill. I pretty much have to rely on, like, the force. And then every time I get over the edge of the MIB camp, wham, it goes dead and it goes down. They got some kind of signal scrambling going on. Maybe even EMP? I'd so love to get my hands on that tech. Of course, I got like mad skills, so I manage to salvage the plane every time. But I have to keep pulling it out of trees and gluing bits back on. I'd really like to see what's going on inside that perimeter. Like Mr. Rosen used to say, try, try again, Dufresne. Of course, he's a zombie now. Not that he's changed much. He's still Mr. Rosen, and he's still wearing those way too tight underpants. And that's Danny. So first thing we need to do is try to fly the plane in ourselves. Something's obviously causing it trouble. Well, alright, so there's the plane there in the ditch, which is near a golem who does not look particularly friendly. Yellow skull. This might hurt. Let's 
Let's try to not get in the brown stuff. And also be very careful not to, uh... No. Not to pull more of them, which we just did. This is gonna get interesting fast. down. This is going to be close. get the plane so if somebody else comes along to pound their head in we at least have the plane. Looks like I got some pictures. So now we're going to go see if we can disable the EMP generator. And let's dodge these guys. So we aren't going to be able to get in there directly because there's a fence surrounding the airport that we can't jump over. Besides, that would look suspicious, but there's a tunnel under here that we can poke our heads into. Orochi body here, so let's take a look at that. This rotation, the code is 739241. Do not print, and yet here it is on a uh, sheet of paper. So you can see how much they uh, care about security here. Seriously, it's bad enough that we're sending passcodes in plain text email. Alright, so the other thing we got off the body is this Orochi uniform. So let's put that on. So we at least look like we belong, at least from a distance. Let's use the keypad here. Seven three nine two four one. Which it's hard to tell, but it does let you through the security field. Now drones like that one will be able to see through your disguise. Orochi will be able to see through your disguise, but only if you get close or within their field of view. So, you basically have to kind of dodge around uh, the various people and drones and, in general, not get caught. You can probably get a little closer to these people than you might otherwise expect, but just be cautious when running around. Alright, there's one generator down. Let's go turn off this other generator. And then we have 
off the northern generator. Now if you're caught, you're not actually killed. What they do is they knock you out and then dump you outside the camp, so you have to kind of sneak back in again. Alright. Uh, this way. And here we go. And return to Danny. doesn't matter too much if uh, we get caught at this point because, well, they'll just drag us outside which is where we want to be anyway. So three, nine, two, four, one. Alright, here we are back at the skate park. And uh, fly the RC plane again which hopefully should make it now that we've uh, turned off the EMP generators. and report in. Ah, uh, Orochi. Trace the life cycle of any product or service and it'll eventually lead to an Orochi subsidy. They've infiltrated every sector, including ours. It's pretty much impossible to piss without getting some on them. And they so overreact when you piss on them. So what are they doing in Kingsmith? More importantly, how do we find out without them knowing? Flyby surveillance posing as a teenage science project isn't bad. If push comes to shove and shove comes to pinning everything on a scapegoat, we'll just use the kid. Feel free to pretend I'm kidding. Ciao, ciao. And we got a QL3 weapon for our troubles. We will grab the shotgun this time. Equip that. And this shotgun we should be able to disassemble. Yep, there we go. One thing we do have is new gear as well, so let's take a look at that to see if any of it's actually any better. Health and attack rating. That looks like potentially a DPS. Yeah, it's DPS. So we'll deconstruct that in a little bit. I'll put you over here. Uh, QL1 healing. We don't have a heal headpiece yet, so we'll put that over here. And QL3 wrist talisman healing. Oh wait, that's health gear. Uh, looks like we don't have any healing, so let's make another bag. Title it and drop our uh, healing in there. And healing. There we go. Now let's pull apart this guy. Which gives us a bunch of fire. Alright. What's that? Oh, crit rating. Uh, let's sit on our SP. We're going to want. We don't have enough for the next thing. So, uh, like I said before, we're going to leave this for another video. Uh, but one thing I believe that we can do is head over to Edgar's Scrapyard, which is where the uh, quest here is leading us. And uh, Edgar there will have some more things for us. Here we are at the scrapyard. Yeah, we're gonna have to get some stuff. Notice he's got some uh, quests for us, some side quests. Uh, 
we're gonna first search the garbage bins for a hose. And be careful around those golems. You'll notice these have a uh, debuff on them. Grinding the gears. Increased critical hit chance if target is suffering damage over time. These are things you want to pay attention to later in the game because they're going to tell you what you shouldn't be doing against a mob. Garbage bin. And now test the flamethrower. Which I believe is a device. Burn down the barn. <laughs> so it's mid there, will it let us? No, why not? It may want cans of gasoline. Nope. Oh, I probably have to actually use it on a mob. Well, where's one of those junk golems? Hello. And it still says we're unable to perform this action. Is unable to perform action. Oh, you know what? It, I think, yeah, I'm an idiot. That's because we uh, have to actually equip the flamethrower weapon. So, and I'm gonna keep us with our real weapon because, as fun as the flamethrower is, it's a uh, Uh, I don't know what I was going to say there. It's uh, going to prevent us from using some of our abilities, and we don't want that. So, hey, Edgar, look at our sweet flamethrower. And standard luminary turn in, and you actually get the flamethrower itself. So we will leave that in our inventory simply because um, that lets us, or because uh, it'll be fun to kind of keep around as, as a toy. There is, however, an actual flamethrower weapon, auxiliary weapon, coming in issue 7. So, that'll be a hell of a lot of fun. So, we're now down back to our story mission. So, I believe this is... Yeah, let's not do that one. Or let's not grab that one quite yet. That's an escort. Tattered note. Edgar is proud of Tango and Cash's accomplishments as guard dogs. So much that he's pinned a note with their kill count record on the side of the bus. Sounds like an open invitation to beat it during one of the scrapyard attacks. The note marks how many drug and zombies Edgar's dogs have killed during the regular assaults in the scrapyard. When an assault is taking place, to use the opportunity to beat the numbers. So let's grab that. And look at the note. It says name and score. Tank one cash. 14 Frankies, 14 Smurfs in 10 minutes. Are you better than my dogs? Prove it. So we won't do that quite yet. We will actually... Uh, let me think about this. Scrapyard Defense is the uh, mission associated with the Tango and Cash one. And Full Metal Golem. Uh, let's actually do Scrapyard Defense. That We should be okay with that. And uh, I believe we'll have enough time. Tango! Cash! Down, boys! I said down! Hush, you'll taste the stick. You know you will. <laughs> Shut your pie holes, boys! We got ourselves visitors. 
Woohoo! And this one's breathing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now that's more like it. Ooh, they're mean some bitches. Sooner bite a chunk off your BUT is look at you. Watch as you don't make eye contact, particularly with Cash there. That's the one right there. You don't much care for that. And he's the friendly one. <laughs> hey, Tangle! Leave that arm alone! It's infected! Fucking dumb motherfucker. Jesus Christ on a bicycle. Fucker's got a taste for Frankies! <laughs> oh, dog's been keeping the yard clean. Goddamn Frankensteins get spooked by him. Those who don't get spooked, they get torn into tiny little pieces. Even I get sick of watching them go at it. And I've seen some sick shit in my life. But the boys, they can't get to all of them. Frankies and Smurfs keep popping up like, uh, like bunny rabbits at Easter. Boom, boom, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh. You a dog person? Cats are good for nothing. Except his yowling dish rags. <clears throat> you been a hero and all? I'm guessing it don't matter much. You ain't got a choice. You're here to fight Frank is and those mutant smurfs, right? I even got some toys you can play with. Toys that go boom and splat. Don't ask me where I get them. Because I won't tell you, and they ain't none of your business. You understand me? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that serious face on you. So now, maybe my boys can take a breather while I get some work done on the short bus from hell right here. <clears throat> we got ourselves a deal, hero. Mind you, keep the noise down. Tango and Cash are the sensitive ties, you know? But I reckon they'll be happy to pick through the pieces after. <laughs> so, what do we got? Uh, gotta go grab the defenses here. And this is, uh... We're gonna have to be careful because we're gonna get onto a time limit here, so... Yet. Uh, I can't pick that up. Why can I pick that up? Oh, because I have to actually place it. So, this is Gunk Barrel. Snares within 3 meter. So, we're going to place that there. Actually, that was probably a bad place. We want to put a slower further out. Let's make sure we're sprinting because we have a minute 30 to actually place as many of these things. As we can. Let's put this out here. Yep. And we have a blue barrel, which is sets monsters on fire within a three meter radius. So we're defending these barricades, so we're going to actually put those near the barricades because the zombies will start banging on it. And uh, that'll basically do damage to them while they're banging on it. So it's kind of a simplified tower defense kind of thing, almost. I actually have to right click on it to place. Got 50 seconds to get these last two up. It's too late. What? No, it isn't. Put another one here. And 30 seconds left. this one here, so it'll continue damage. Alright, so now we've got about 18 seconds before the zombies show up. Let's get up here. Not that it will necessarily help us too much, but uh, gives us a commanding view of the battlefield, or some such. See, we're also getting credit for the uh, the Tango and Cash mission, which is why you want to have both of them at the same time.
go. Got all the zombies we need. Alright, second batch of defenses. Inventory again. Another one of those flames we're doing on this side now. So again, we're going to use the flame barrels near the barricades so the zombies stand in them. Just dump it right here, why not? And these are the gunk barrels that slow the zombies down, so we're gonna stick these out a little further. I don't actually know the best strategy, but hey, the strategy that I usually use works, as in it defeats the mission, so you know. have these new barrel types. These stuns within three meter. So again, I'm going to put these near the barricades because they'll be standing there and that stunning them will keep them in the fire and all that fun stuff. Alrighty. Now we defend the barricades. Again. This time we're against Drog. As long as we, uh. don't stand in things. Probably could have put some of them a little further out to deal with the Matriarchs, but, or the Mist Witches, but I had forgotten about them. So we actually finished off the side mission there. We're trying to angle our shotgun so we hit multiples. Two of the three barricades defended. We finished off our side mission, so let's turn that in real quick. Get the standard Illuminati turning message. Tango. And it's Rangers. off to uh, the third set of barricades. Oops. Did not mean to pull that up. So here we go. This only has one barricade to defend. Uh, right, right, okay. So we're gonna put the slower ones again a little further out. Spread them out a little to kind of cover the approach. 
Then we have the stunning barrels, and we're also going to spread them. We're going to put one right at the barricade, because that'll help with the, uh, the melee drog that come in. And we're going to put two further out to hopefully assist with the, uh, the mist witches, which like to stay at range. fire barrels and we will place those reasonably close to the barricade again. Alright, defensive time. Notice the uh, stunning ones have the benefit of interrupting their attacks, which helps because it's kind of hard to see their attacks against the ground effects. See our barricade there, still at about 75% health. comes a big guy. So let's buff up and smack the heck out of him. Barricades defended. Definitely one of the uh, more entertaining missions in this game. And takes a little bit of strategy. Let's send our report in. I hope you're taking notes on perimeter defense. Optimal distribution patterns, damage type ratios, horde management, etc. We may need to apply these tactics in the future to areas that are slightly more high profile. That isn't to say the scrapyard is worthless, it may prove an efficient source of materials, and that bus is all that's left of communal transport. Good thing we've got a Gartha. Ciao, ciao. And she gives us a weapon toolkit. Let's see. Oh, we have enough AP where we can go and uh, finish up this quadrant of the pistols and get a few points into the uh, second quadrant here. go. And at five points, eh, we won't rank up our uh, skills just yet. And we will, however, uh, cut the recording here, and we'll be back soon with more Secret World. Thank you for watching.